Marche ups his record to 41 3 and 1 31 knockouts 21 consecutive wins dating back to 1999. Meanwhile Hussein falls to 28 and 3 a long journey back to Sydney Australia for Hussein Hussein the crowd filling up here at the Thomas and Mac Center still to come Corrales Castillo two into the dressing room of Diego Chico Corrales with trainer Joe Goosen. And as you take a look at uh, Corrales getting gloved up let's get you in the mood as we take a look back at that spectacular 10th round of the first fight between Castillo and Corrales. Round 10 scheduled for 12. After what I'd seen that whole night with him, hey, it's hard to say anybody had an advantage at that point. I mean, I hit this guy with everything but the kitchen sink. And I was looking for that to hit him with. They touch gloves, and here we go again. In the 10th round, I was tired. I mean, it was a tough fight. So, yes, I was tired. Right on the chin. Right on the chin. I had a believable left foot, but I really didn't remember that well. It was pretty quick. Three, four. I don't think anything. It's a fight. <laughs> you don't have a lot of time to think. Well, first I'm looking at my wife. You know, Five, link at her, let her know I'm okay. Six, seven, Catch eight. up with the count. Get come up. Me, me. All right? uh, given the commands to come to me, everything was fine, and uh, he was ready to go. What a dramatic moment here in round 10. I, well, I'm still buzzing, though. I'm, this would, I'm still buzzing from the first knockdown. Castillo looking to finish it here. He goes down again. Takes the mouthpiece out. I didn't think he was going to get up. I figure he does get up. No matter where I hit him on the head, he will go down again, and the fight will be over. No, for sure. Um, I remember pulling the mouthpiece out of, my, out of my mouth. And it's hard to hold on to a mouthpiece and gloves. You got no fingers. You don't, you know, they can slip right out your hand very easily. And that the mouthpiece is out of his mouth. I said, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> we're going to have to deduct the point. I'm going to penalize step one point off. What? Look at the replay. That's the first thing I said for what? Man, I didn't drop it on purpose. It's a slip out of my hand. I don't know if he did it on purpose, but if he did, if the results were good for him. He received about 39 seconds between the knockdown, getting his mouthpiece cleaned, and the deduction of the point. Dreadful round for Corrales. Again, Castillo going back to work. I knew Corrales was hurt. I was overconfident. He was my error. I may have been too confident, and he hit me. If Corrales can get through this round, he may very well need a knockout. Castillo runs in real hard, comes in real hard, walks into a straight right hand. Corrales coming back after being on the canvas twice. None of them tries to hurt him. He has no more steam left. Corrales swinging. Now I'm unloading everything. I can tell him he's, he's hurt. Castillo's in trouble. And then a hard, hard right hand. And with another foot, there's Tony Mix sliding in. And the fight is over. Corrales with a remarkable, dramatic turnaround. He was hit with a barrage of punches. His hands went down, his head was limp, and that was it. Once a fighter is unable to protect himself, the fight's over. I was in bad shape, so it was a good stoppage. But if he had not been given 40 seconds when he went down, it may have been a different story. I was too tired to be happy. I couldn't believe this guy had fought me like that. We kind of stuck together for the rest of our lives. We're tied together by one heck of a fight. And the, good, the one thing about fights like that, there has to be a repeat to it. And the big crowd forming here, getting ready for the main event of Corrales Castillo 2. Capacity here is 18,500 for boxing at the beautiful Thomas and Max Center in Las Vegas and this is a fans fight and a fighters fight lots of boxing luminaries in the crowd beginning with James Tony who just uh, defeated Dominic Wynn last week in uh, 
Reno, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Of course, super middleweight champ Jeff Left Hook Lacey throwing punches in the crowd and welterweight contender Shane Mosley. So a lot of uh, boxing greats, luminaries, famous people, celebrities on hand here in the house at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. Well, the time has finally come for Carreras Castillo 2, the rematch of an extraordinary bout, one of the fiercest, most compelling matchups in recent memory. Yes, Diego Chico Carreras and Jose Luis Castillo together again. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert, ringside from Las Vegas. We all expected Castillo Corrales 1 to be a good fight. But what we marveled at in May certainly exceeded the highest of expectations, just as Sugar Ray Leonard did in his first fight with Roberto Duran and Thomas Hearns did with Marvin Hagler. Corrales opted to stand and trade, a game plan that conventional wisdom suggested was strategic doom. Well, Corrales prevailed where Leonard and Hearns failed. Will Corrales choose to fight the same type of battle tonight? Will Castillo give him no choice? What we're about to find out is whether this eagerly awaited return can possibly match or even surpass the first fight. Now, I got to tell you, before the bell has even sounded for the rematch, an intriguing twist. At yesterday's weigh-in, Castillo, after three attempts, failed to make the division weight limit of 135 pounds. Therefore, the title belts are no longer on the line. However, their pride and legacy still hang in the balance. And with that, let me bring on my ringside partner, Steve Farhood, filling in tonight for Al Bernstein. And see what kind of a effects will this have on the on the two fighters? Well, the effect on Castillo, of course, Steve, is the key because we don't know how much he struggled to get down to 138. Did he just give up trying to make weight? Did he did he go all the way and just couldn't take any more off because he was dehydrated? Physically, the idea of him going into the ring against Corrales at less than 100 percent doesn't bode well for him. Castillo, I mean, Corrales, on the other hand, I think all you had to see was his interview with Jim Gray in the locker room. He's loose. He's looking forward to this, and it seems to me, from what we've seen, he's not affected at all by any of this. Castillo's behavior, though, inexcusable and uh, to the point of unbelievable. It's the, it's the biggest fight in his career, and it's one of the biggest rematches in boxing history. It's incredulous. And it's very unprofessional. Again, as I said at the top, this is a guy who's been making the lightweight limit, Steve, for, for seven, eight years. He's had trouble in one previous title fight making weight. But uh, this is the biggest fight. He's getting paid a seven-figure purse, and it's just unprofessional. Yeah, it's disrespectful to the sport yes. as well. What's What might be similar? What might be different here in the rematch, Steve? Well, rematches, Steve, are often about adjustments, but I don't think so much this rematch. Look for Corrales and Castillo to fight the same type of frenzied battle. In that sense, they can't help themselves. This time, it's the intangibles that will be critical. How much did each fighter leave in the ring in May? are both willing to again sacrifice what will be needed to win. How much will their weight issue affect their respective approaches? With that said, both Corrales and Castillo would be wise to have learned from their first fight. Between them, the better for Diego Corrales. So despite the Castillo weight problems, will this rematch still live up to expectations? Will it be as savage and brutal as the first fight? Will it prompt Corrales' trainer, Joe Goosen, to once again say, you'd have to be sadistic to want to see this again? Jose. Luis Castillo, by not making weight, forks over $120,000, half to Corrales, half to the state of Nevada. Adding to the embarrassment, Castillo's camp doctor, Armando Barak, fined $1,000 suspended for slipping his foot under the scale to try and lighten the load for Castillo. He should be banned from boxing for life. Castillo's manager, Fernando Beltran, called Barack an egomaniac who fired trainer Tiburcio Garcia two weeks ago and then rehired him earlier this week. With Garcia out, Castillo stopped losing weight, but Castillo has no one to blame but himself. You know, we've thrown many accolades his way when he's deserved it. Now he deserves a big shame on you, Jose Luis Castillo. 
Castillo made 147 at a three o'clock weigh-in today. Who knows how much weight he's put on since then? And remember how he said the first fight was tarnished by the mouthpiece issue. Well, now he's tarnished the rematch. Is it possible that Castillo did this intentionally to give him the advantage with no regard for the titles? By doing this, he'd be stronger than Corrales, who followed the rules. You know, he did bet Corrales' promoter, Gary Shaw, $100,000 that he'd knock out Corrales. Well, Steve, if you want to go conspiracy theory, and I'm not saying I do, it would all depend on when Castillo de decided not to try and make weight. If he made that determination several days ago, then yeah, he'd have a huge advantage now. But if he made that determination after the weigh-in, and while he was sitting in the sauna, then I don't think there's much of an advantage for him right now. Yeah, logically, I would think Castillo would be drained physically and emotionally, not Corrales, but who knows? If there was any doubt, the first fight personified the toughness, power, and uncanny courage of Diego Corrales, who said he'd go through hell to win. Well, after seeing his face, he probably did. However, because Castillo failed three times to make weight, let's listen. A final prayer session for Corrales and his team. Corrales making his way to the ring now. As I was saying, because Castillo failed to make weight, casting a whole different light on this fight, although it could still be a great fight, a crowd-pleasing fight. But we can only wonder how that will impact on Corrales, Steve, psychologically. It's a fair question to ask. All I know is that this fight, to the fans and to Corrales, was never really about the two titles. In that sense, I don't think there's that much of a change in Corrales' attitude. When the bell rings, these guys are going to tear into each other, and Corrales wants to validate what happened in May by winning again tonight. The irony uh, is he can probably relate, recalling how he struggled with weight problems and was decked five times against Floyd Mayweather uh, Jr. The weight problems affected his strength, his stamina, his focus as he makes his way in. in here and it's uh, pretty clear that the crowd is favoring Castillo bottom line whether there are world titles at stake or not I'm racing for another wild shootout and I think the crowd feels the same way no so they're both in the ring referee Joe Cortez with the final checks let's check the figures as we go to the tail of the tape Corrales, three years younger, unusually tall for his weight, but the big story, Castillo not making weight. These are yesterday's uh, numbers at the official weigh-in. Castillo, 138.5 on his third try. The promoters held another weigh-in this afternoon at three, agreeing on a catch weight of 147. Castillo, 147. Corrales didn't have to be there. And the key rules for this fight, there's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fight is ruled a no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecard.
So here at the Thomas and Max Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, we're getting ready for our main event, the rematch, Diego Corrales versus Jose Luis Castillo. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Thomas and Max Center here at the campus of UNLV in Las Vegas, Nevada, as it's time for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions and Top Rank Incorporated in association with Caesars Palace, Wind Resorts, and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission the Chairman Skip Avancino Jr., Commissioners Dr. Tony Alamo, John Bailey, Joe W. Brown, and Dr. Flip Omansky, the Executive Director, Mark Ratner. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Jeff Davidson, Dr. James Game, Dr. Al Capanna, and Dr. Todd Chapman. Timekeepers at the bell also keeping count of the knockdowns tonight, James Cavan and Mike Lachella. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Jerry Roth. From Providence, Rhode Island, Clark Sammartino. And from Tokyo, Japan, Nobuaki Uratani. Now introducing to you our referee in charge, the third man in the ring, fair but firm, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go. The time has come for the main event of the evening, the rematch you've all been waiting for. 12 rounds of boxing in a lightweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Las Vegas, it's showtime. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red and green trim, hailing from and representing Empalme, Sonora, Mexico. His weight, 138 and one half pounds, with a record of 52 wins, seven losses, and one draw. He has 46 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the two-time WBC lightweight champion of the world, Jose Luis El Temible Castillo. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner in this 12-round special attraction, wearing black trunks with gray trim, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Sacramento, California. He weighed in at the lightweight limit of 135 pounds with a record of 40 wins, two losses. He has 33 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former junior lightweight world champion and the current WBC and WBO lightweight champion of the world, introducing Diego Chico Corrales. Once again, a referee in charge, Joe Cortez, now to give instructions. 12 rounds of boxing schedule. All right, gentlemen, we won all the rules in the dressing room. Yeah, we got heck of a going, Camerino. I expect a good, clean fight. Get una pelea limpia. We'll go aquí, están bueno. The punches here are still good. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. And remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. You saw Team Corrales holding up the three belts, WBC, WBO, and the Ring Magazine belt, but those are not at stake tonight. Corrales ready for Castillo. We met with 
Castillo yesterday his exact words to us were last time I lost my championship this time I'm going to get two championships well minutes later at the weigh in it became a moot point when he couldn't make weight. So despite the controversy will they continue where they left off five months ago in essence is this round 11 the prevailing opinion no matter what another shootout is inevitable we'll soon see. Boy, because of the controversy, oh, yeah, Steve, it just adds so many new oh, layers to this fight that didn't <laughs> exactly. exist before. But all that stuff's over now. It's a fight. And it's already a good fight because they're going at it right on the inside. Castillo okay. okay. normally not a fast starter. He gets stronger as the fight goes on. That one of the reasons the game plan of the first fight was for Corrales to jump right on. And trade left hooks head. with Castillo. Castillo's landing his left hook and watch that right uppercut. It was his weapon again and again in the first fight. And uh, Corrales coming straight in. And there's a left hook to the jaw by Castillo. You know, you watch Castillo start quickly. It's usually a slow starter, you wonder. Just conjecture, but does he in the back of the mind make, I don't know if I have the energy to go 12 hard rounds. Another left took upstairs by Castillo. And they're picking right up where they left off. Big first round for Castillo, though. No doubt he's taken it so far halfway through. And that is nothing uh, new as far as uh, Castillo is concerned. Big left hook again by Castillo. So Castillo starting strong, and there's a right hand the top by Jose Luis Castillo. Corrales missing. Steve, we were wondering if oh, big right hand by Corrales. We were wondering if Corrales would make any adjustments. No adjustments. He's happy again to fight Castillo's fight. The same exact styles as the first fight. Castillo, who weighed in at 147, about 3, 4 o'clock today. Corrales, 149 at about 6 p.m. Remember, these are lightweights, 135. Castillo 12 above, Corrales 14. The weight limit. Final seconds of round one. A better first round here for Jose Luis Castillo landing many left hooks. That's getting a little red there, that's all. And you gotta rinse this off. I need a bucket right here. Um, you know what? Use that little jab. Once you finish with everything, use that little jab to restart your combo. Okay? Round one, we start with heavy punching on the inside and low blows right on the Chico. And Joe Cortez says, hey, that's low. And later in the round, Corral is willing to stay on the inside and as was the case in the first fight, long on fighter, yes, but he's very comfortable and very capable of landing big shots when he's right, when he's in close. Seconds out. So they fight mainly on the inside again to begin the rematch. Here we go, round two, scheduled for 12. The key to Corrales' win in the first right, fight right, right. Bring up, bring up, was his hand up. speed. No one thing, no hold, let's go. But he was so successful whenever he would take a step back and box. But obviously, he chose to fight inside and trade. And he's doing the same thing here. These are hard shots by both. Oh, nice left uppercut by Castillo, and that was a good weapon in the first fight, and he didn't use it often enough, the uppercut. And boy, Castillo just throws that left hook so naturally. You notice, even on the inside, 
His left foot is always in front of his right, which allows him to bend and get leverage on that left hook. He turns his hip, and he really bends and gets full power on that shot almost every time. Castillo trying to force a third fight, a trilogy with a victory here tonight. And then he can fight for the belts. Look at these series of left hooks by Castillo, landing repeatedly on the head of Perales. And then a right uppercut on the inside by Castillo. Another one, a combination, and it's all Castillo. Back comes Corrales with a left hook. But a right hand by Castillo, and then it's Corrales' turn. Here we go again. Now Corrales sends Castillo back. And a right uppercut by Castillo. And they continue to trade. And this crowd is into it. Did we see this fight already? It looks familiar. It's mirroring the first fight, and we're only in round second. Steve, they're smothering each other, and it's Corrales pushing Castillo back. He wants the infight oh, even more oh, than oh, Castillo oh, does. Oh, There's oh, some oh, blood oh, now oh, around the oh, right oh, eye of Corrales oh, as the heads oh, oh, came oh, together. Oh, oh, that's not going to stop Corrales. He's been in a lot worse shape than this. He has absolutely no quit. Well, he's the fighter that got busted up badly in the first fight. What's happening now is getting busted up again and maybe five months in terms of the recovery from the beating he took to his face. Maybe five months wasn't enough. Yeah, factor going in was uh, who recovered quicker. Corrales. The momentum shifting for Corrales here, but then just when you say that, of course, Castillo comes back. Oh, there's a big left hook by Castillo right on the chin. And once again, they meet in the proverbial phone booth in the center of the ring. Oh, left hand to the guard of Corrales. And the fan stamp Castillo. What a round. D, close your eye. Close your eye. Hey. I'm just looking at it. Yeah, yeah it's I'm all right. Just looking. Let me have some water here. Some deep breath. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Okay. When you go inside, when you go inside don't go in with your left. Just throw your combination. Keep throwing combinations. Keep going. Come on, you're hurting him. Keep, keep going. Hit him. Okay, hit him hard. Okay, go to the body. Raise your hands. Mark Ratner held up his side saying the cut was actually from a punch. If a cut is caused by a punch and the injured fighter can't continue, he loses by TKO. The scorecards go out the window. But I would say unlikely in the case of Corrales. <laughs> Blood appeared near the right eye of Corrales with one minute left in round two. Man, this is the same pattern as the first fight. Toe-to-toe -to -toe action. Bombs thrown by both fighters. Called the first fight, swelling on the Corrales side became a problem starting in round seven. This time earlier. Steel, this amazing pace can continue. Well, and then that, of course, brings into the count the question about the weight with Castillo. If he drained himself, can he fight this way for 12 rounds? Right now, it's not affecting him, but we're only in round three. We'll see. He looks very uh, energized, very strong. Get him out. Get him out. Joe Cortez, the third man of the ring. Hard body shots by Castillo. Hoping that the cumulative effect will be a factor later on. The next jab Corrales throws will be the first. Yeah. Yeah, that's something uh, we could have said in the first round as well. Uppercuts on the inside, a very valuable weapon for Castillo. The chance of Castillo from the, uh, the crowd. Only 5,000 for the first fight. 
Maybe closer to uh, 16, 17,000 here, 18. Who knows? Hard to say. Steve, when they're on the inside like this. Momentarily dazed. Oh, go on the head, go on the head. Can he hang on? And he continues to just stand in there. He doesn't hold or he doesn't box. He fights. And he's walking into the shots. He's walking into the fire. Incredible. He's still inching forward. And even throwing. Hurt. And landing. And frustrating Castillo. Body, oh, what a left hook after the two body punches. And a right hand by Castillo. Corrales remains on his feet and remains throwing punches. Unbelievable chin and heart by Corrales. I know you do. Hey, okay, now easy on him, baby. Easy. Hold on. Hold on. Let me have that water. I need the water. All right, now listen to me. Listen to me. You back them up. You sort of back them. Okay. Now, keep those hands up good. Try to use that little short straight right hand every so often. It's kind of hit through the loop. In round three, Corral is willing to trade the right hand of all punches, which it was the left hook the whole fight for Castillo. And after landing that big right, he hurts Corrales again with a left uppercut. Then at the end of the round, Corrales was pushing Castillo back. What kept Chico up? And the end of round three, look at Corrales coming back. And there was a moment just before this where he was landing from the outside. He went right back to the inside. That's where he wants to be. That's where he has to be. And it's meant to be. Right. Round four. Scheduled for 12. Rugged round, Corrales, who uh, was nearly put down, but he's coming back strong. The swelling continues under the right Stop. eye. His Stop. nose is swollen. Yeah, his nose is swollen big, and you know what? Corrales right now trying to commit to a strong jab. It's the first time we've seen it. And Corrales continues. Oh! Castillo, historically a slow starter, gets it done fast. And we were worried about Castillo draining himself, trying to make weight. He was the stronger fighter throughout. Well, he didn't win any titles, but he takes the rematch and uh, perhaps sets up a trilogy. If he can make 135, yes. And he also won the bet with promoter Gary Shaw of $100,000 by KOing Corrales. Which uh, cancels out some of the fine that he paid. Yeah, that was $120,000. What's a few hundred thousand yeah. euro there? Among friends, right? So Jose Luis Castillo has settled the score tonight, and he did it with the big left hook. People are stunned, including uh, what looks like Cal Ripken. Yes. And Corrales <laughs> looks stunned as well. 
Joe Goosen and uh, Stitch uh, Duran uh, helping Corrales out. A uh, bittersweet victory for Castillo. Sweet from the standpoint of redemption. Bitter in terms of no titles to show for it because he didn't make weight. You take a look at the knockdown, boy. Corrales took so much punishment in the first fight. Not tonight. You can understand why he went down. That was his perfect and clean, a left hook. He was getting hit with left hooks from the first minute of the first round. He never defended it properly, never slid under it. He's a tall fighter, and he was right in line to that left hook. And look at him. When he gets up, and you know he's going to try to get up, watch his legs. That's not getting up straight. Joe Cortez had no choice. A good call. Steve, uh, there's no question Castillo looks so much stronger than uh, Corrales and continues to raise questions about that weigh-in. And you see the knockdown punch again. Corrales winding up to throw his own right. Perfect timing by Castillo. Land that left hand unimpeded. Perfect knockout shot. Well, he kept his mouthpiece in. <laughs> yeah, good point. Boy, his eyes are just totally glazed. And you know what, Steve? He, he wasn't just knocked out tonight. He was beaten up. I mean, his, he was marked. He was cut. One more look at the culmination of, of a rematch that did not go anything like the first fight because of Corrales' inability to soak up punishment tonight. Maybe he was too loose, too relaxed, as we saw earlier in the uh, dressing room. Look at his eyes. Wow, his nose is swollen about twice his size. You can see that he's cut over the right eye, and it's hard to believe it's only the fourth round. A bruised and battered Diego Chico Corrales. He got up at around 10, but he was in really bad shape, and there's no questioning the, the stoppage by referee Joe Cortez. And given what happened in May in the first fight, I think Castillo was very happy Corrales didn't get up and start returning fire. That's uh, interesting because he said uh, this time when he will put Corrales down, Corrales won't get up. Well, he got up at 10, but the fight will stop. Let's get the official uh, situation from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. 47 seconds in round number four. Our referee in charge, Joe Cortez, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout, Jose Luis El Temible Castillo. So Castillo raising his hand in victory. And he has even the score. It could set up a rubber match, a trilogy, if you will. We'll have another shot at winning the titles and making even more money. We mentioned how he won the, the bet with uh, Corrales' promoter, Gary Shaw, of $100,000. So uh, he's just uh, he's really ahead of the game now, I'd say. Let's go to Jim Gray. Without your permission. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Jose, congratulations. Ricardo will once again translate for us. What was the difference tonight between this fight and the first fight? What was the difference between this fight and the first fight? This time I trained. The other, unfortunately, I didn't have time to train. But, well, they're not excuses. And here are the results of the training. You know, last time I didn't have time. There was not enough uh, training camp. This time there was plenty, and I can show you what I do if I'm trained well. Were you able to see something in the first fight that enabled you to know that if he stayed inside, that you would be able to win? Que viste algo de él que podías, sabías que si aunque te peleara dentro lo podías, le podías ganar. Bueno, Diego, Diego es un gran campeón, y bueno, le gusta el intercambio de golpes y se presta mi estilo, y bueno, bueno, se prestó y saqué muy buen resultado. I think you know his style is perfect for what I do. He comes in, he likes to be inside. That's what I love to do. It's just easier for me. The weight issue. You did not make weight. Julio Cesar Chavez, who you are his idol. He is your idol, rather. And before the fight, he said he was very disappointed in you. It never happened to him. Are you embarrassed that you didn't make weight? 
Lo del peso, ¿qué te, ¿cómo sientes no haber hecho el peso? Muy triste, muy decepcionado, ¿no? Desgraciadamente batallamos bastante para el peso, nos descuidamos, tuvimos un error, pero, pero bueno, le pido una disculpa públicamente a, al señor Boaron y, y espero no volver a fallarle. You know, I'd like to apologize, you know, to everyone, especially Bob Arum, because, uh, you know, it never happened to me in my career. I did make some mistakes I shouldn't have, and uh, I couldn't make weight. Why couldn't you make the weight? Why? What happened in your training camp that allowed you to be overweight? Dile, ¿por qué sentiste que no pudiste dar el peso tú? Bueno, no lo di porque hace, no sé, 15 días estuve lastimado de una costilla, incluso peleé con la costilla un poco lastimada, afortunadamente... Salió, salió bien las cosas y no pude hacer mucho entrenar muy fuerte por eso no pude dar muy bien el peso. I had a, you know, I, my rib was hurt two weeks ago and I couldn't I couldn't work out for a few days. I knew that was going to be a problem, but you know I still hurt a little bit, but I had to be here. So this was not for the title. So Corrales is still the champion. There's an automatic clause for a rematch according to Bob Arum for this fight. Would you like to fight him again for the title and will you be able to make weight? ¿Te gustaría enfrentarte otra vez a él en 135 otra vez por una pelea de campeonato? No, a lo mejor sí, hacemos un, no sé, como las películas de Rocky, cinco o seis peleas, pero las cinco o seis van a ser muy interesantes, muy buenas. Hey, I'm willing to do it. If they want to do like the Rocky movies, do five or six, let's do it. Let's bring in Diego Corrales. Stay with us, please. Diego. We're invoking our right to rematch. Okay, well, that's fine, but let me talk to the fighter first, Gary. Diego, what happened this evening? We saw you. You were so relaxed, you were so at ease, and then tonight you just got caught and, and it seemed as though you couldn't recover from the second round. Uh, you know what? No, I was good. I was fine from the second round. I was good. I just, you know what? I'll take them from him. I won't make no excuses. It got me a good shot, you know. Fourth round got me a good shot. I opened up two kind of wide with my shot, I think it was. I'm not sure. I'll go back to the tape and I'll take a look at it. But these things happen in boxing. I mean, we're not a... Uh, we're not a... Uh, hitting each other with powder puffs out there, you know? So, it's, it's cool. It, I mean, it happens it's to the best of us, and uh, it happened to me tonight. Before we take a look at the shot, how deflating has the past 24 hours been for you? You thought you were going to defend your title. Seemed like a lot of the air in this fight went out when he didn't make weight. Did that affect you at all? You know, I, I won't make an excuse. I'll tell you what, I won't do it. You know what? I, I, I'm not, I'm not asking you to make an excuse. I'm just wondering if it affected you at all. You know what? If it did, uh, it's between me and God. I'm going to tell you what, I won't do anything to, to take away from the credit of his win. And uh, if, if I did if I did say that, if I said whatever, it, it, it could take away from, his, from the credit of his win. And I, I won't do that to him. I have too much pride to do that to him. Um, Was there any advantage that he gained by not having to deplete himself and get to weight, uh, whereas you had to? You know, again, I, I'm not going to do anything to just to take away from his win. I mean, I have my opinions on it, and, and, and well, I give them to us. It's okay. I mean, no, no, it's it's cool. I, you know, I'm, I'm telling the truth because I'm gonna tell you, what, I'm a man of, very, of a great deal of pride, and uh, I take pride in what I do. And, and it was it's, when I came in on on weight, that's my pride making me do that. To come here and defend my title as, as honorably as I can, that's my pride making me do these things. So I won't take away. I have too much pride to take away from his great win. Um, all I can say is, you know, again. You guys support cancer research. It's a, it's a, a debilitating disease, and uh, support it. Of course, we all agree to that. You elected to stay inside, and by doing so, it seemed as though you were playing right into his game. Tell us about this knockdown here. You know, this is my first time taking a look at it. It looks like, see, I throw a left hook, right hand, left hook, and I, I opened my hand up. Plain and simple, I opened up. Uh, when I was throwing my left, my, the other foot back, I opened my hand. I opened my hand out, and uh, that's that's that, that's a great shot. Diego, you always get up. You take pride in getting up. Obviously, oh, yeah. no one wants to see you get hurt, yeah. and everybody has your best interest at heart. How difficult was this moment for you when you were counted out by Joe? Was I counted out, or, or did you say? Stop well, the fight. I don't know if he counted you. He elected that you could not continue. I don't know if it, we'll, we'll talk to Joe exactly, but. I said, you know, I still believe, carry me out on my shield. Carry me out on my back. Don't don't let me walk out. I mean, I shouldn't walk out of here. Joe, did you count him out, or did or, or, or did you stop the fight? I, I, counted, I counted 10. He was up, but he was still all, all, all out of, out of in bad condition. And I felt it was the best thing to stop it there. We don't want any tragedies in boxing. But my first and foremost concern is the safety of the fighter. And you know, what would happen next, God only knows. But I did the right thing. And if the fighter was not up on his, on his, on his own will, you know, he's up, but he's all bent out of shape. To me, that's still considered down. Diego, there's a clause for a third fight. If he can make weight, it'll be a title fight. Is that something that you're interested in? Or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, let's do it right now. I, I say we could, 
we can wrap up and go back tonight. Well, you uh, raise an interesting point you say right now, but did you suffer at all from having this fight and all the punishment that both of you took so soon after the first fight? I don't know. I mean, uh, that's going to be to the opinion of people. I, I think everybody's going to form their opinions tonight on, on whether or not we did. Um, What's your opinion, though? You're, you're in your body. We're not. You're in your mind. Was it too soon? No, I think I'm, I was fine. I'm young. I, I can recover from something like that. It was just plain and simple, a great shot. Again, I'll take nothing from the guy. He, uh, he landed a great shot, uh, uh, my mistake, my, my, my boo-boo, and uh, he, won, he made a great shot. He won a fight. Uh, take nothing from him. I, I, won't, I won't do that to him. Sure. I mean, I take too much pride in this sport. Appreciate your time here, Class Thank Act, Diego. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations to you, Jose. We look forward to the third fight. Dicen que quieren la tercera pelea. Dicen que quieren ver okay. Bueno, no sé, vamos a ver, voy a platicar con la gente de Top Rank, que son los que me manejan, y si ellos deciden que sí, pues adelante. You know, if Top Rank says, let's do it third time, we'll do it. We're ready. I do want to ask one other question, because I did ask Diego this. Did you have an advantage over him because you did not have to deplete yourself to make the weight, and he did? ¿Tú crees que una ventaja por haber este, no, no dado el peso y él sí? No, no, no. Bueno, el día del pesaje no di el peso, pero hoy me hicieron pesarme y me hicieron que se pesara 147 kilos, 147 libras, perdón, y Diego pesó 151 libras hoy. You know, they made me weigh today, and I was 147, he was 151. So I know he was just as 149. Was 151. Bueno, yo, yo 46. But that's not the question. The question is, he had to get no, down no, to 135 and you didn't. So can no, you ask no, him if, if, if he had an advantage? He said it's not. It's not an advantage. No, okay. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Let's go back to you, Steve. All right, Jim. Thanks very much. Uh, first of all, a, a gracious and magnanimous uh, Diego Chico Corrales in, in defeat, uh, making no excuses. Let's listen now, uh, Steve, to Joe Cortez towards the end of that fight when Corrales was knocked down. He got up at uh, 10 and then uh, uh, no argument with the stoppage by Cortez. Oh, oh, no, certainly not. I think Joe Cortez explained it as well as anyone that Corrales rose by the count of 10, but he considers it a knockout because he wasn't upright. Let's take a look at the numbers, uh, Steve, at the time of the stoppage in, uh, in that fourth round. Here are the official judges' scorecards. Jerry Roth had Castillo ahead 30 to, to 27. At the time of the stoppage, Clark San Martino had Castillo ahead the same and the same for uh, Nobuaki Oritani. So it was all Castillo to that point. Yeah, and in the first fight, uh, if anything, Corrales took an early lead. Uh, this time, uh, Castillo started quickly, a fighter who has a reputation as being a slow starter, a fighter who perhaps weakened himself trying to make weight. He wasn't weak in there. Nope. If anything, Corrales just wasn't able to take his punches. And let's take a look at uh, how the press row scorers saw it here. Steve Kim from MaxBoxing.com had Castillo ahead 30 to 27. Steve Springer from the LA Times had it the same. And George Willis had it the closest between the uh, official judges and the press row scores. George from the New York Post, 29-28. Yeah, I, I, uh, I gave uh, Castillo all three rounds. I thought he won them pretty clearly, and he won them by, uh, by his left hook alone. I mean, it really was the key. The first fight, he scored with a lot of uppercuts. I thought that was his best weapon. Tonight... Co Corrales had no defense for the uh, left hook. How ironic that the, the first fight, as the Castillo fans celebrate, how ironic that the first fight was called a tarnished victory by Jose Luis Castillo in uh, light of the mouthpiece recovery issue. And, and now Corrales uh, goes down and uh, he loses, but Castillo, uh, you know, it's called a tarnished victory because of the weight problem with Castillo. You know, once the bell rang, these guys were going at it. That first round, we both commented, it looked like the first fight, uh, but there was a huge difference, and the huge difference was that in the first fight, Castillo landed a lot of big punches, and Corrales took them. This time, there was no defense. Going into this fight, Corrales had been knocked down 10 times in his career, Steve. He got up all 10 times. Mm. This time, at least officially, he didn't get up. Yeah, let me correct myself, but it was Castillo who called it a tarnished victory 
in the first fight and now uh, uh, what a lot of people are going to think is a tarnished victory here in this fight because of the uh, the weight situation. So so what happens uh, from this point on uh, you see a uh, trilogy a great rivalry here in boxing. Well let's give Castillo the benefit of the doubt and assume he can make 135 pounds. You know sometimes rematches just prove to lead to a third fight and there have been so many great trilogies and I think these two guys are headed for that. Unbelievable. I, I, I hope their bodies are, are up for it, particularly Corrales after that uh, whipping that he took. Yeah, let's let's give them a little time to recover, perhaps more than five months yeah. this time. And uh, But if they go at it again, you know that Corrales, perhaps stubbornly and perhaps foolishly, is probably going to fight the same type of fight. Well, let's hope that their bodies can take it. Let's hope our hearts can take it as Diego Corrales uh, fights his way through the crowd, back to the dressing room, uh, getting the handshakes, uh, hearing a lot of boos from the crowd. Uh, a lot of Castillo followers and fans here and this big crowd at uh, the Thomas and Mack Center. What a difference in the first fight when they only had 5,000. But uh, it was a, a lot of stunned people here tonight. Fourth round uh, stoppage for Jose Luis Castillo who evens the score. Chico Corrales, Steve, he wanted to fight the third fight tonight in a few minutes. It's not a very good idea, but I think he was willing. It's interesting, Steve, because that's exactly what Castillo said after the first fight. I'm ready to go once again, but that's the warrior spirit in these two guys. And that's exactly why we'll look forward to a third meeting if there indeed is one, because these are ultimate warriors. As Jose Luis Castillo tries to make his way back to the sanctity of his dressing room, feeling a lot different tonight in the rematch than he did after the first fight. Yeah, big sigh of relief, big deep breath for Jose Luis Castillo. Any final thoughts as we close things out here, Steve? Uh, to bring it full circle, Steve, what we learned tonight is something we knew already, which is that when it comes to rematches, we don't know what's going to happen. And the same can be said of trilogies. Very different fight tonight, just as exciting for a short period of time. Corrales couldn't handle Castillo's power. He did in the first fight. The third fight, We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. One of the great rivalries in, in boxing, no question about it. As we say goodnight uh, here from ringside, let's go up to Nick. Thanks, guys. I think the beautiful thing about this, the amazing thing, is you really can't say after chapters one and two with certainty who's the superior guy here. You know, often at this level, even great fighters have this kind of an astonishing intensity of a performance maybe once in their career. Now we've seen it twice with both and you know given the hunger and the guts and the punching power of both men I, I just felt going in that and I think a lot of people did that they both felt obligated to put on this kind of pitch battle as long as it lasted and we in boxing are the supreme winners here and both Castillo and uh, Corrales absolutely earn our utmost respect so recapping this sensational night here in Las Vegas it was an explosive one and it began with a surprise and the junior lightweights when Bobby Pacquiao surprised the crowd shocked former world champion Carlos Hernandez winning a 10 round split decision. And in a welterweight bout Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. rolled a 23 and 0 with a fifth round TKO win over Jeremy Steyer. Jorge Arce with an overpowering performance to retain his WBC flyweight title with a second round TKO over Hussein Hussein in the rematch and in a sensational start to explosive finish rematch Jose Luis Castillo even the score knocking out Chico Corrales in three is the rubber match anything but inevitable now. And as we say goodnight from the Thomas and Mack Center, we'd like to acknowledge our hosts once again, Caesars Palace and Win Las Vegas. So for Steve Albert, Steve Farhood, Jim Gray, and our entire crew, this is Nick Charles saying so long, everybody, from Las Vegas.